So the only defense that the Israeli lawyer has is saying that's lying, yet they don't prove how the lawyer for South Africa is lying about the Israeli government committing a genocide. Today, we have seen a continuation at the International Court of Justice. Israel has called on the ICJ to reject the case brought by South Africa, alleging that it's committing genocide in Gaza. On the second and final day of hearings at the UN's highest court, Israel's foreign ministry advisor, Tal Becker, said South Africa had presented a profoundly distorted factual and legal picture. The applicant has regrettably put before the court <clears throat> a profoundly distorted factual and legal picture. The entirety of its case hinges on a deliberately curated, decontextualized and manipulative description of the reality of current hostilities. How is like the videos and stuff that people see that the Israeli government is doing like a manipulated or distorted view of what's going on? South Africa purports to come to this court in the lofty position of a guardian of the interest of humanity. If this was the United States defending the Israeli government, they wouldn't have any issue with the United States, quote-unquote, the guardian of humanity. But in delegitimizing Israel's 75-year existence in its opening presentation yesterday, that broad commitment to humanity rang hollow. How was he trying to delegitimize the existence of Israel by saying that they're committing a genocide? And in its sweeping counterfactual description of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it seemed to erase both Jewish history and any Palestinian agency or responsibility. How are Palestinian kids responsible for what Hamas does or what the Israeli government does? It's hilarious. Well, it's the second day of this landmark case, which began yesterday with the South Africa presenting its argument. Let's listen back to yesterday's closing statement from the lawyer representing their legal team. The international community continues to fail the Palestinian people, despite the overt dehumanizing genocidal rhetoric by Israeli governmental and military officials matched by the Israeli army's <coughs> actions on the ground. Yeah, the only one here that has the capabilities of committing a genocide is the Israeli government, and they are doing that. Uh, us may have said they wanted to wipe out Israel, but do they have the capabilities of committing a genocide? No. That's why we don't see uh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dead Israelis by the hands of Hamas. But we do see thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dead Palestinians by the hands of the Israeli government. Despite the horror of the genocide against the Palestinian people being live streamed from Gaza to our mobile phones, computers and television screens, the first genocide in history where its victims are broadcasting their own destruction in real time in the desperate, so far vain hope that the world might do something. Yeah, why isn't the 153 nations that is against the Israeli genocide like sending troops to fight against the Israeli government? It is crazy how like no one has sent any troops to stop this. Uh, during World War II, Everybody sent troops to stop the uh, Nazi Germans committing a genocide. Uh, people are sending troops to stop the, uh, the Russian government from genociding the Ukrainian people. But why aren't anybody sending troops to Gaza and the West Bank? Let's cross live now and speak to our correspondent, Anna Holligan, who is in The Hague. And Anna, just bring us up to date with what we've been hearing uh, from both sides, please. Those powerful statements really give you a sense of just how much the ICJ is a legal battleground for all of this. So 
Today we heard from Israel, they accused South Africa of weaponizing and trivializing the genocide convention, pointed out that Israel was one of the first signatories and said that Israel was responding in self-defense under international humanitarian law to attacks. Well, it's hilarious how they continually use the claims of self-defense when it's obvious not a war of self-defense. You can't claim self-defense when you're murdering uh, thousands upon thousands of innocent civilians. By Hamas gunmen, they said those attacks, the atrocities committed by Hamas on the 7th of October constituted the biggest calculated mass murder of Jews since the Holocaust. You might be able to see behind me now, uh, the court hearing has just ended. So yesterday, South Africa had three hours. Today, Israel had three hours. That's it now in terms of the interim measures hearings. The judges will now go away and deliberate, uh, look at what both sides have said. South Africa, of course, accusing Israel of genocide. Judges have to work out whether or not there is a plausible uh, reason to believe that there could be a risk of genocide in order to rule in favour of South Africa. And why this matters? This court doesn't have any powers of enforcement. And if a judgment, though, goes against Israel and Israel ignores an order from the judges here to cease military hostilities, as South Africa has requested, then it will make it very difficult for countries like the UK and the US to continue to support Israel. And we are expecting... The US is still going to support Israel no matter what the ICJ rules. A decision on this.